I do have a painting that I'm going to try to demo or at least start. Um, so I'll start with the papers. Um, right now, my favorite papers are the UART papers. Um, I like the UART 400 and I like the UART uh, 320, the wrapper one. And what I usually do with those papers is um, uh, mount them on a rag mat or mounting board, uh, and then I paint them red. Um, uh, there's another paper that I've been trying that's a pastel premier paper. I don't like this one quite as well as the UART, but I have tried it. It's very heavy. It's a little more expensive. Um, when I was just going to ask you, what do you paint them? I mean, what oh, do you do sure. Paint them? So I use a combination of um, permanent alizarin crimson and uh, Payne's gray um, watercolor. watercolor. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, sometimes they come out really bright, other times they're more like a wine color, um, which affects how the end result looks. Um, this is probably my favorite color, this color red. Uh, and then um, I also like to use this pastel board. Um, I really like this. I paint this red as well. Um, when, when I started the gray background, I just used the permanent alizarin crimson. Uh, the downside of the board is when you get to the bigger size paintings and then you put it with glass, it's really heavy. <laughs> so, um, I have started, um, I have some really big boards and I've been having my lovely husband here cuts them down for me. Uh, to smaller sizes. Um, as on the bigger paintings, I try to use the, um, the UART and mount it to gator board uh, to keep it lighter. Um, so that's the paper. Now, um, you heard that I used to be an engineer. Well, unfortunately, that's um, bled over into my painting a little bit, a lot. <laughs> and and um, so I, when I started, I went to classes where they had pastel boxes organized a certain way. And I came to realize that really didn't work for me. Um, and so late, the last several years, what I've been doing is um, I keep all my pastels in um, the original box, and then I label all the different colors. I don't, I don't know if you can, you can come look at them afterwards. But uh, I have them by color, and then within the color, they're um, by value. And what I have learned, at least for me, uh, is that keeping them in the same spot, like when I'm painting. This box is on my left-hand side, and uh, I'm going to sound like a, um, a real um, hog when it comes to pastels, but I have my box of unisons on my right side, and then in my drawers I have my entire box of um, uh, shrinkies, and then I have all my Terry Ludwigs in there too, and they're all in different drawers. But from a spatial standpoint, I... Um, remember where all the colors are, because I always put them back in the same spot. Even if they're in the drawer, I'll use it and then I'll put it back where it belongs. Um, now, the thing that that really helped me with um, was I started to learn um, which colors worked for what type of object I was painting. Because what was happening before is all the yellows kind of looked alike to me, and when I started, ha then when they, when I gave them all a home, then I knew, okay, my favorite color to use on um, sunflowers are these 
uh, violet yellows in this part of my box and then over in my unison box there's a little corner of yellows that I like to use. So the downside is, for me anyway right now, is it's not very portable. Um, <laughs> so uh, so um, I haven't um, I haven't gone plein air painting in a while, but I'm hoping, I'm eventually hoping to kind of manage that and get it down into a smaller size box so I can, um, now that I've learned all my colors, I can uh, go out and paint again. Oh, my current uh, interests, uh, I was going to talk about, um, I have a clipboard too. <laughs> um, so uh, when I started painting, I, I wanted to do these grand landscapes. And uh, unfortunately, what I found was that I was actually really good at doing the shapes like in still lifes. And in fact, one of the first classes I went to was with Anita. Louise, um, that's right, thank you. And um, uh, at that time, Albert Handel, well, that was, you know. <laughs> and, and actually, I didn't realize that they were dating, and then he came in and gave her a big smooch. I was kind of. <laughs> um, but, uh, so he came in and he talked to me, and he said, You're really good at at these shapes, and I was doing a painting of uh, peppers at the time, and he said, you should do more of this, and so, you know, since it was Albert Handel, I went, oh, sure, right, get right on that, and so I did, I did and I just, uh, I just started um, uh, just doing lots and lots of still lifes, uh, and after a while, you know, they got more detailed, and sometimes to the point of being very tedious. Um, I have, I wanted to bring this, because I, in the past, I've done um, still lifes where I've had like four of these types of pattern vases, and I don't know how I did that, but, um, <laughs> uh, but the point of my story is that, um, you know, that's, Kind of um, my personality, you know, coming from an engineering background, I really was looking for the details and I wanted to capture all those. And in my journey as an artist, I'm trying to um, let go a bit. <laughs> and it's funny because I come into, um, you know, every year with the show, I'll think, um, wow, I really loosened up this year and I'll bring in my painting and then I'll look around and I'll go, Oh, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not as much as I thought. Um, so I'm still uh, working on that, and uh, who knows next year, like we'll see. But it, it's a journey for me. Um, it's not always easy. I'm sure all of you probably uh, struggle with your personality types. Um, the. Uh, the advantage I have of doing still lifes is being a mom of four, I could set them up in my studio and paint from life. It's not, you know, when you have a bunch of kids, it's not very easy to take off and, you know, go into the mountains somewhere and paint uh, for extended period of time. So I um, now finally, I only have two left at home. <laughs> Oh, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> um, so I have, I have um, my younger, my youngest two boys are, are still home. I have a senior and an eighth grader, uh, and of course the eighth grader is the high maintenance one. So um, he required, he requires a lot of time. Um, but the point of my story was I've always wanted to be an outdoor painter, but with having kids, you know, I had to find something that worked for me, uh, that kind of schedule. Um, so this year, what I tried, what I started to do is I 
tried to do more landscapes from photos, and I'm excited I signed up finally again. It's been several years I signed up for a landscape class. But I also thought I can do my still lifes outside. So I brought examples of, um, like these are the pansies from my front porch. Um, this is a bouquet of flowers I set up. Uh, and now I didn't paint these outside because you know that darn sun, it moves the whole day. <laughs> so, um, and then uh, like, I took several trips to the botanical gardens and um, took pictures of roses and started painting those, which I found um, not quite as tedious as this, but close. <laughs> and Another thing I discovered was uh, the water lilies at the botanical gardens. So I did um, a few paintings of those. And I really, um, well, if you look close up, you can see I'm starting to loosen up, especially in the background. Um, here I had, uh, this is another picture of roses from the botanical gardens. Um, so, the, to make a long story short, I'm, I'm trying, in my journey as an artist, I'm trying to not be so particular and to try to, I think my goal is to, one of my goals is to um, use the least amount of strokes of the pastel to achieve what I want to achieve. Um, so I want to try to use the least amount of pastel and uh, I don't always uh, get there sometimes I get all fastidious again but um, I'm, that's the direction I'm trying to move in um, and the other thing I discovered uh, that I like to paint um, this summer was buildings because those are sort of like really large still lifes, right? So I've been, um, <laughs> and I actually, I got one in the show. So uh, I have a building uh, painting in the show. Um, so before I start on this, uh, Anne had asked me to um, show, yeah, um, to explain how I do, um, these uh, the ceramics like this, and it just so happened that um, so, just, so I don't have uh, slides on this one, but I think it was for the artist magazine. I did a series of pictures um, with explanations um, on how I do the the pattern basis. I'm not saying. I don't know if this is the best way to do them, but this is how I would accomplish that. So, um, what I learned when you do a, a white base with a blue design is you have to be really careful about the, um, the colors mixing together because otherwise they get, the white can get really dirty uh, or muddy. So, what I would do is I would draw the vase, and then I wouldn't be real detailed with the pet. Well, of course, this is me saying. <laughs> um, okay, so real detailed for me. I would just approximate the shapes of the flowers um, or the pattern, and then um, I would fill in the white area around the pattern because if I lay that down first, if you do it the opposite way, then you get blue in your white. This way, uh, you don't have that trouble. Um, go to the next one. So then I go and I put the blue in. Um, can everybody see? I don't know if I'm standing. Am I in the way? I'll stand back here. Um, so then I just go and fill in the blue pattern and for that, I usually use a, a blue-gray color, uh, and then I go to the next one. 
And then, then I'll fill in my background and start to put some of the highlights on. And then, um, oh, that was the foreground, the reflection in the table. And then, is this one the, more? Yeah. One. And then you put the last thing, the most fun thing, is when you get to put those little highlights on. But you have to save that till the end. Um, so that's just really quickly how I would do that. When um, I use the same uh, technique for this, except um, you know I put the blue down and then I and it's actually not those patterns are not white. They're like a gray blue. So I uh, would lay those in afterwards. And if you look, you can see. Um, well, you can come up and look at it afterwards. You can see there's paper, but you can see paper between the pattern and the um, the background and the foreground. So. Okay. So that that was. I hope that helped a little bit explain um, that. Okay. So now I'm going to go on to this. Um, when Ann called me to see if I would be able to do this, I was in the process of um, <coughs> doing a bunch of uh, small flowers um, that I had taken at the botanical gardens. Um, you know, just this size, and then I was um, so. I was uh, just doing small size work, and I was trying to, uh, my goal was to try to capture the sunlight and how the sunlight falls on the flowers. Uh, so these are all from photos. There's, there is a difference between painting from life and painting from photos. I'm sure all of you know that. And so it took me some practice to try to uh, figure out how to interpret the photos so that it's, um, uh, so I got the shadows and the lighting uh, uh, done properly. The interesting thing for me was the biggest challenge was the green. I had a lot of trouble with the green, but um, I might, uh, I think after some practice, I might have figured that out, so. Um, your work is just stunning. Oh, thank you. Sarah, um, on your patterns on your bases, you know, they're so small and intricate. Do you use pastel pencils or just straight, regular stick pastels? Um, no, I, I use um, just straight pastels, and usually I use the side of the pastel. Uh, so if there's, like, lines, I just try to use the side and place it on there, not draw it. Um, I showed you these because uh, what I wanted to explain when I start painting, for me it's really important to, um, like say, begin with the end in mind. And that is have a clear vision in my head of what I want the painting to look like. Um, so when I was thinking about this demo, I wanted to have something where I could give you a feel for what I do, but so it wasn't so complicated that I couldn't explain it very well. So that was why I, um, I went to the botanical, not, not the, Albuquerque Rose Gardens by Hillerman <laughs> Library, and I walked around, I, I saw this rose paint, uh, rose growing, and so when I looked at this and thinking about where I wanted to go, I thought, oh, I like how, for the purposes of this demonstration, I like how this isn't one of those really frilly roses. It's kind of got some really strong petals. But I liked how they were, um, they had some ruffle to them. And I, obviously I like yellow. 
Um, and I understand yellow better than I understand pink. Uh, the other thing I liked about um, this photo that I took is I could envision having purple or lavender in the background, which I thought would be nice with the yellow. Um, so that's why I selected this um, photo. And what I did was I did the drawing. Um, I can't, can't really see the drawing in the video, I guess. Um, so I have a drawing. I ch made changes um, to some of the petals a little bit because I wanted to get more of the ruffle. Uh, I marked in where some of my darker values are. I changed the leaves a little bit. I liked, for example, um, I really liked how these leaves were, but then there was this jumble of leaves here, which I thought, well, that's not going to work. I'm going to. So I just made up my own leaves there. Um, and then, um, oh, when I took the picture, uh, there's a bug in it, but I decided that I was going to edit out the bug. Um, let's see. Oh, the other thing that I liked about the picture, or the, this photo that I took, was the, the sunlight is very strong, which I like, uh, a lot of times I like having a strong light source. Okay, so when I start a painting, uh, the first thing I try to figure out is the, um, the value relationships. A lot of times on, um, well, let's see, this oh, this painting here, like I'll go through and just have like one layer, actually on all of these, I'll just go through and have one, try to just have one layer everywhere so that then I can step back and um, make sure I have the value relationships correct. On here I'm going to, um, I'll show you how to start, but I'm not going to, if I do the whole one layer, it's going to take me a while. So, um, Okay, so let, I'm going to start. Now the other thing, I, I, I'm not very good at talking while I'm painting, so <laughs> I get confused easily. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, because sometimes the red confuses me when I'm trying to get the main color, so I will go in and I'll pick a the value and tone that I want for the background, and I will... Um, And I'll just lay that in um, around. Because I have found that sometimes I get confused with the red. Uh, sometimes I don't, but it just depends. So I found that if I give a little bit of my background so I can at least establish this is uh, where I'm starting uh, for background. I don't always do that. If you notice on the slides I brought, I started with the pot and I put the background in afterwards. I'll do that if I'm really confident that I have a good value for the pot. When I did this rose, I was a little I wasn't quite sure. I didn't want to go too light or too dark. So I'll lay in some of the background to just give me an idea of where I'm going. Do you pre-choose your colors? I see the lids was over on the side. Oh, is that just for the demo? This is just for the demo. Um, the I did find it helpful, though, because I I learned like, oh, that color works really well here. So then I was able to figure out what I did the last time. So um, uh, 
but this, yeah, this here, I don't usually do this. I'm not that. <laughs> um, I probably couldn't be. <laughs> is there another? Oh, I thought somebody had a question. So this is a, um, uh, this is like a rosy gray color. This is um, from my Unison box. And if you notice, it it doesn't in it 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 doesn't look very pink there. But if you put it on a white, it looks a lot pinker. That's another thing I found with working on red is it really makes me go to warmer colors, which I like, um, even though it can be confusing. Why do you choose the red background? Um, when I've, there's, there are two things. I like, um, so if you don't want to put a lot of pastel on the paper, it gives you that nice color in the background so that you can see it peeking through the pastel. And then as a side benefit, I saw that it um, encouraged me to use um, brighter, warmer colors. Um, you know, in the same way that this this looks um, warm, this looks less warm here than here. So, if I really wanted a warm color, I'd even warm it up more. Um, the other thing that I like to do, I don't like to just use one. Um, I'm going to get into trouble if I start talking. I don't like to just use one color. I try to find colors that, like in this background, I use, um, want to use a few different um, shades and mix them in. This is a, a, another color from my Giro box. But if you also notice, I'm using, I use the side of my pastel as much as possible. I think I used the, I did use that bright purple. But if we look down here, I have another. This is from my Unison box, and I will just layer that on top. I This is way back from when I took a class with Anita Louise West, and I had a still life with a white background, and she, you know, I didn't know what, what do you do when you have all white <coughs> background. And, she suggested getting like a cool uh, and a warm color, like a, a blue, a red, and a yellow version of it, and you just kind of layer them on top of each other, and then they kind of vibrate. So that's, if you notice on the background, you know, I have like a warm rose color, and then there's like an orange, um, and what colors did you say again that would vibrate? Oh, if you, like, if you take um, a, a blue and a red and a yellow, and they're, like, similar value, but you can layer them on top of each other. Um, So that gives us a start. Like I said, I'm not going to um, uh, do the entire background, at least now, not now. Um, so what I'm going to first do is um, work on the dark side. Everybody knows that, right? You start with the dark side and you move to the light. So in this case, I'm going to use this um, 
brown green from my row box and put in some of these darker values. And sometimes in the beginning I get too dark on these. But I can I can always kind of layer lighter things on top. But also if you notice I use the side of the pastel trying to find all these, just kind of lay in some of the darker. <laughs> and I'm going to now use the next lighter brown green. I can't even tell you the number of it. So, <laughs> it's not, this one actually isn't that much uh, lighter, but it's a little more green. would go in and start to contrast that a little bit with my um, light colors to see how I'm doing. I think it's probably The other thing I'm not doing here that I do at home is I walk back this way. So I, I take several trips outside, you know, I'll look, walk back like 10, 15 feet to see from a distance how it's going. So I got some of my yellows. start on the lights? Do you start with your darker lights? Yeah, I'm just trying to get an idea. I think I got the shadow a little dark, so I'm going to lighten it up a little bit with a little bit of a, it's a little bit lighter color. So I'm just trying to get a feel for the back and forth between the values. I did, and I did get it a little dark, so I'm going to put a little bit lighter colors on top. But see, if I started too light, it's hard to go darker. If I start a little bit on the dark, and I can go lighter easier. yellow is like there's kind of two ways 
to sh or for the shadows. There's like a brown kind of shadow and yellow, and then there's the green colored shadows that are probably the reflection of the sky reflecting in the shadow. And as you can see, this happens a lot in flowers where you'll have like a really strong shadow, but that light from this petal is reflecting onto the back side of the shadow here. So um, that requires a different color. Uh, so this is a, um, what's it called? Um, this is from my Unison box. And it is like a, I think they put black in the yellow, and, but it looks green to me. And that's probably, I got that a little dark. So I'll go back and, yeah, well, that one's a little dark. We'll go to the next lighter one. See, and because they're all in my box, I in labeled, I know what the next lighter one is. <laughs> <laughs> These are a lot of these colors that I'm using. Um, the violet yellow from the um, Giro box, and then the, um, these yellow greens uh, from the um, Unison box are uh, yellows I use a lot in the sunflowers, too. To, I think this is a little warmer, lighter in here. Okay, I think we should add some of the lighter colors in. So. So this is the lightest uh, violet yellow. Um, I get myself into trouble when I really use the um, like the chrome yellows. I, those are like accents. Um, I tend to use these more muted uh, yellows. The other thing that's fun about the um, the violet yellow is it actually goes to like a purple. There's a, a purple color. It goes from the. It starts here, and then they start mixing purple in with it till they get 
to just pure purple. So that's one thing I like about the Giro pestles. They have several of those types of colors, the brown green, the violet yellow, um, blue orange, where they start with the orange and go to a blue and kind of have gradients in between. So. <coughs> Uh, down here it's a lot lighter, so gonna, I still might have that shadow too dark. I'll have to lighten that up a little bit. This is lighter in here. Do you, do you do any blending? Um, no. Uh, I try to. Um, I try to layer instead of blend. Um, so if I feel like I need to blend, like I I need two colors mixed together, I'll layer them on top. But um, I really don't. I try not to touch my hand, my finger. I do every once in a while I will, but I try not to. Not that I'm against it, I just like the way it looks better when it's um, just the straight color. So I, I still have that shadow. I feel like that shadow is a little too dark. So I'm going to layer a little bit 
lighter pesto on top. And then, um, still might be too dark. And then I have this um, color Reseda, which is in my, um, it's a green, like a greeny brown color. In this area here where there's some um, <coughs> sky reflection on the leaf, on the petal, I mean, sorry. And down here at the end, there's some lighter, here, this is lighter than I got it. So this has a little more green to it. Here. So uh, let's pretend that I've been working all day on this and <laughs> I'm farther along and I have some of these um, uh, value things a little better. I think I get some of these too dark. Um, but the value, I, I think the most important thing when you do a painting, I'm sure you can all agree, is, or one of the most important things is to get that the value relationships right. And um, I did practice this before I came, so I I have done um, like I'll uh, my husband can attest to this. I'll work on a painting and I'll be like, oh my gosh, the values are all wrong. And I'll just start over. Um, sometimes on the pastel board, I can wash it off and or just wash off the parts that are wrong. But on this um, sanded paper, I find if I wash it off at all, that the texture changes. So I don't like the way the pastel looks on it later. So I'll just start over. That I can do that with these smaller paintings. Um, that is the nice thing about the pastel board. You can really um, wash off parts of it. Okay, so I have some parts on here now. There's some highlights um, that I want to um, bring out. Like over here, there's some highlights. So I've got this. Oh, no, that's not the one. That's not the one. This one. No, this one. This one. See, I don't have my, they're not in their little homes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I did, this is a good one though, because um, this is, yeah, I always use a little bit. This is a, um, I'm trying to get some of the places where the there's some 
sun, more sunlight reflected. Okay. I'm looking at this and thinking I want some more orange. It's, it's too brown in here, so I'm going to take um, the violet yellow, but it's um, like more orange now. Let's see if that if I can get that in there and warm that up a little bit. And then I have um, orange in there. And then um, It even goes, this is one of my favorite colors in that. Um, uh -oh. <laughs> I'm going to pick up all the pieces too. Um, this is like a, you can see it's, this is the one step right before this real violet color. I'm going to add some of these spots in here. I'm going to add in that real. Um, <coughs> And I need to um, still need some more. I'm going to try the blue orange and put some of that in here too. So the background color is showing through to these almost kind of a little outline between the yellow petals? Well, is that, um, I, I, um, is that how you define the petals? Well, I will go back and, um, like, fill in some of it a little more. So I just use it, like, sometimes I fill it in more, other times I'll leave it, um, it just depends on um, how, how it looks. I like the way it looks because you can use it as like a like a, sh a shading or just an interest or you can make it just meet right up to it. Um, it just adds some excitement. Um, and Okay, this is um, this is ash green. I'm gonna try this stuff. That's a little too dark. And what I'm trying to do is bring the, the blue out in this a little bit more, but because I see this is more gray, not um, so I wanna I'm gonna um, I'm going to take off that really dark green that I did. I have, you know, my little. And do a little bit more with the, just glazing some of the blue over it. And uh, what did I, I want to do? Okay. 
This looks still too dark. Okay. Um, so I'm going to stop there because I'll show you the. Um, it's like a cooking show. <laughs> In my oven, I have. <laughs> So what I would end up doing is next I would go and um, fill it. Do, I, do you want me to put this in front of here? Okay. Um, so you can see I left a lot of the red showing. Um, and you can see where I put the blue in. Um, to, this is the light from the sky reflected back into the shadow. Um, the background um, is uh, violets and um, kind of what's well, called in the Chevrolet box, it's a bronze green. Um, and then these are, uh, I use a combination of um, uh, Unisons and some Terry Ludwigs. Um, but I wanted to, if you look, you know, I added, the nice thing about using a red background with the green is then you get that automatic, um, you know, red in with your green, um, which I really like when the little bits of red are showing through. And I have some of my skylight reflected in there um, and some, um, like, turquoise colors. So, um, that's... Uh, after you bake it, so that's all I had. Um, oh, oh, <laughs> Does anybody have any other questions? Are you, I think at one time you might have uh, framed with um, spacers or without. How are you framing with glass now? 
Um, yeah, I don't, I don't use the spacers anymore. I just put it right on the glass. I can't remember. Um, well, I know Fred Miller had an article in the Pastel Journal about that, and when I saw that, I was because you know those spacers were hard to manage. So yeah, these um, like this one, I don't. Um, this is just right on top. I, I do uh, use fixative. Um, before I put the glass on, I pound it, I slam it on the ground, I you know, I blow on it, um, and um, then I just put the glass right on top. And what I found is, if I, you probably have all experienced this, where you put the glass down and darn, there's like a dog hair in there, so <laughs> you got to take it off. And um, there's hardly any pastel on the glass. Um, so, yeah, I just started doing that. Do you tape it? I tape the edge, yeah. What happens on the back? So if you have to take the dog hair out, do you clean the glass before you Yeah, I'll wipe it off again. And I use um, the Sennelier Latour um, fixatives. I like that a lot. It usually, and I, I'll, put the, I'll put the painting upright, and then I spray it, you know, just go like that, and then I let it dry off, uh, it doesn't take very long, because um, if you lay it more like this, then you can get drops, um, like little drop patterns. Um, Your color is darkening? I, you know, um, I can't tell, so I figure, well, if I'm the artist and I can't tell, I mean, I've heard that can happen, but I can't tell, so. Um, what kind of glass? I use uh, museum glass. Um, that's why I frame without a mat, because um, that's expensive, so I only want to put it over the part that's important. <laughs> Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.